You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Alive Again on Pet Life Radio. Thank you for taking time out of your day or evening since we are global and can be heard everywhere in the world and our podcasts are archived. So my name is Brent Atwater and our co-host is... Hi, it's Coco. It's lovely to be here again, Brent. Thank you. And thank you, Coco, for compiling a list of questions that we've had from listeners. Today, our show is Questions from Listeners, and that's what our show is going to be about. We're answering your email questions. Now, if you have a question you'd like to submit, send it to Brent at PetLifeRadio.com. Now, don't send your questions in for personal reading because that's what we do professionally. Send in your suggestions for a show or send in your ideas that might expand the subjects of shows we've had before. Take a little break with our sponsor and we'll be right back. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. Swipe It's a revolutionary new product that literally swipes away cat hair from virtually any surface. You know, most of us struggle with a roller or vacuum cleaner to clean up cat hair, but anyone who has tried either of these knows they just don't work very well. But Swipe It's patent pending glove has a magnetic-like quality that removes cat hair from almost everything. And best of all, Swipe It's is machine washable, so you can use it over and over again. To order, just visit SwipeIt's.com. That's S W I P E T. Yes, a simple solution for shedding. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. We're back. Thanks so much for sending your questions to Brent at PetLifeRadio.com. And if you'd also like, join our Facebook group on Animal Life After Death. The little link is right above our podcast. Click on that. Join us. And you can ask your questions in the group because lots of times our radio shows are taken from our group members. And we want to give a huge round of applause and big hug to all the members that submit really wonderful questions that keeps the education and the awareness growing. And we have a question today. All right, Coco, who's our first question from and what does they want to know? Hi, this question is from Teddy in Carolina. Uh And Teddy asks, if our animals are never reincarnating... What do they do for eternity? So what she wants to know is, pardon? Oh, I agree with that. What I am aware of is that energy is just that. It becomes part of all there is. And when an animal doesn't reincarnate, you think to yourself, well, are they off, you know, chasing dogs, playing with birds or romping with kitties? I don't think so. I think they go back into a pure energetic state. And if they're not reincarnating, obviously their soul has evolved to the point that they don't have to reincarnate. Another point being that even humans as an old soul, once they have evolved to the state of this is their last incarnation, when they get to the other side, they can stay on the other side and be energy and live in all there is because then they're a more balanced being. That's why their incarnations are finished on Earth. Or they can choose to return to Earth to help someone they know or to help individuals. And that is simply a choice to come back from a reincarnations are over, karma is evolved to its highest state of ascension, and now it's just a personal choice or a pet's choice to come back to Earth and help humanity involve. The third thing they can do is they can be a guide for someone on Earth. And a lot of times, that's the choice that most entities who still want to stay in service, be it human or pet, do. They become a spirit guide. And a lot of animals become the spirit guides of animal communities. Because you'll see them say, well, when I lost my horse, Teddy, then one of the things I learned was when Teddy was on the other side, he is constantly giving me information to help with those who are crossing over and to help with those who are coming into all there is and, quote, the other side. 
So, Teddy, I hope that answers your question in that the three things usually are, one, they finish their service and they go into all there is and the evolution is just done and they become part of all there is and enjoy it, sort of like perpetual vacation. Or two, the pet can choose to return to experience more. And a lot of God animals are pets who are not reincarnating again, but they come back in service to expand and help those on earth. For example, one of the heinous things that people really hate is all of the animal abuse and all of the neglect and all of the shelter problems and the carnage. People say, well, why do these dogs or pets or cats or whatever go through all of this? And I just read a thing today on pigs. It was just absolutely horrific. And the reason they do this is usually that is an old soul or a pet soul that has chosen to come back to volunteer to take on the heinous activity to change mankind's interfacing and actions with them so that after that pig dies, he changes all of humanity's way that they're treated in the feeding and processing plants. Or after that dolphin passes away, they come back and are caught in nets so it changes the entire fishing industry. The third way that a pet can stay yet return in service is being a guide. They can be a guide to another pet. They can be a guide to a human being. They can be a guide to an animal communicator. A lot of communicators will find that they have previously passed pets that are still staying on the other side and not reincarnating again as their spirit guide. So I hope that answers your question. What's your next question, Coco? The next question we have is from Josie in Australia. Her question is, If I knew an animal but did not have a soul contract with them before they pass, can I ask them to return to me and start a new contract if they don't have one with someone else? Ooh, Josie gets 10 points. That's sort of a hard one. If I knew an animal but did not have a soul contract then before they passed, can I ask them to return to me and basically create a new relationship? Yes. Say if you met an animal in your travels and you became very attached to the animal and then you found out later that the animal had passed and they belonged to somebody else or it was an animal in a shelter and you had an attachment to the animal but you couldn't adopt the animal or it was a friend's animal that you knew hadn't been loved and treated well in its life and you would like the animal to return to you so that you can give that animal a good life in its next incarnation? Well, I think that the answer to that is no for this reason. When you come to Earth, you have a soul's contract or a soul's journey, and you have free will choice along that journey. And I think that we had a question from a girl, oh, several shows ago, where she said, my boyfriend and I had a golden retriever, and I really love that dog, and he's my boyfriend's dog, so when he dies, can I ask him to come back and be my pet? And that's sort of the same thing. Well, the answer was no, because it was an animal who had a soul contract in that specific lifetime with her boyfriend, and that animal did not have a specific contract with her in that lifetime, so that was a definite no. So when you ask this question, or Josie's question is, did these animals that she saw in a shelter, were they just non-committed or no connection to anyone animals? She didn't specify, but... Okay. Well, I think what it is... is, question, though. Well, usually when an animal comes in, it's going to either have a contract with somebody or it's got its own separate journey to do solo. So usually the ones, and this is what fascinates me, usually the ones in the shelters are the ones that came in to do it solo. Now, if you walk in and you go, oh, that's my reincarnated dog, then it just had to go through the journey of the shelter to be able to get back to you because that way the shelter experience was just part of the entire karmic no coincidences that you ran into them and go, oh, there's Fluffy. But if an animal comes in with no ties to any human being in its incarnation or its short lifespan, then that animal came in to do its own learning experiences and its own path and journey. 
And most of those animals you will see, think about it, most of those animals will be in shelters or havens or think about the dog fighting dogs. They never knew love, hello, and all of a sudden, you know, they come in and they get all the abuse and everything and everybody's going, how can they do this to all these dogs? But each of those dogs contributed to thousands of dogs later down the pike that won't have to deal with that. And as we said, those are God dogs. And there's an article on our pet reincarnation blog about God dogs. Now, what about the animals that are picked up? And there was a terrific story about an animal that was picked up and turned into a therapy dog. And I think animals like that, there is a destiny. Again, I think that's more of a God dog thing. There was a destiny for that pit bull who was torn to shreds and had no ears and really just was almost an invalid that was found by the person who does pet therapy or rehabilitated by a dog trainer and then goes on to help people in nursing homes and healthcare facilities and children's hospitals. So I believe those dogs already had a connection, a predetermined connection, because most earth interfaces are predetermined before you ever set foot on earth. Now you say, why is that? It's because earth is the learning school. And so when you set your soul to go back down into this dense form we call a body, you literally say, okay, what am I going to learn? And you may have a boyfriend that was just absolute the beast or a girlfriend that was just absolute the bomb. But each of those were learning opportunities. And so when you were on the other side and energy and all there is, you were going, well, how do we evolve our souls so we don't have to go through that many incarnations? Can we just do some really good stuff on earth in the earth school so we can evolve faster? Well, at that point in time, you come to earth. So a pet therapist would run into that god dog that had been eaten up and ruined and fighting and turn it into a beautiful animal that goes to nursing homes. Does that sort of answer it? Yeah, that last one, the god dog who became a, um, you know, a, a helper to the elderly, the, the last human that that dog was with, the, the woman who rehabilitated him, would he have a contract with her at all or was he just doing his duty as a god dog? The contract was that they were to connect, but he was doing his duty as a god dog. Okay. So they came back because one thing people ask me multiple times is how many people can an animal reincarnate to? It's in the book, folks. And for those who don't read it or just skim it or who get the ebook version, and I really appreciate all those who get the ebook version, but you really, if you're into this, might want to get a hard copy or a paperback because we're going to use it for classes. And in it, you can write notes and make notes. And a contract is between your soul and another soul. It's not about a group soul thing. It's about your pet and your soul. And now, that dog that was in the fighting ring and the pet therapist, that was more of a group soul thing. She came in as a pet therapist. He came in as a god dog, endured all the heinous crimes that he went through. They joined forces together as a group thing. He became a therapy person, affected the people's lives he was supposed to, and then saved all the lives of pets who were put in fighting situations and who were heinously abused by the laws that were changed because that dog endured those conditions. So when they were put together, it's more of a group evolution of her soul meeting with his soul and him doing his god dog job and her doing her therapy job, but they each needed each other to interface for the higher good of the whole. But they didn't have a specific contract one-on-one that he's going to reincarnate to her, and that's all. It was more of interfacing as a choice on the earth school so that each of them did a higher and provided a higher and better good for the souls that followed. That's great. It gives you a, a lot to think about, doesn't it, especially with the abuse, the animal abuse that goes on. Well, and with all the rescue shelters and things like that. I yeah. know you said you had worked with Otto's Law and you went and saw Auspice the farm Law. animals. Yeah. Uh, and the Auspice farm Law. animals, you want to explain what that is so people can learn? Yeah. Well, Oscar's Law is an organization in Australia which started out by being anti-puppy farms. A lady found, went to buy a puppy. This was, you know, 20 odd years ago, went to buy a puppy from a breeder and was horrified at the condition of the puppies in the breeder's yard. They were just in cages. It started off her trend, this one dog called Oscar. 
she rescued the dog and then during the night she broke in and stole all the puppies and took them to the RSPCA and it started a, a, a worldwide awareness of what puppy mills are and then she got into the farm animals and filmed one of those videos, Brent, that you're talking about, the pigs, oh. which also destroyed me. I've become a vegetarian because of all of these things. And um, she talks about her heartbreak with all the animals that she rescues and a lot of it makes sense to me since I've been part of your group, Brent, about the God animals. And as much as every time I, I hear about it, it still hurts my heart, I know that this is a part of the evolution that is going to end. Eventually we won't have the cruelty that, and these souls will be free and that's my aim. And when you did that, let me ask you, did you understand that that was really all of this is going on for the higher good of humanity? I mean, a lot of people, when they look at shelter animals or things like that, the one thing they don't focus on is, and let's change this into human terms, mm. everybody that passed away in the buildings on 911, yeah. they donated their souls to help change all of history. Yeah. And so I think that in recognizing how many pets die, I mean, I was doing a survey the other day and I realized if I can try and pull up those figures now that 750,660 pets die each month that's 25,022 pets per day just of dogs and cats that are household pets in the United States hello that's a lot yeah. And I think that when people consider the animal shelters and the hoarding and everything like that, what they have to understand so that it doesn't really, and especially I can't watch the abuse videos and all the things like that because I just can't handle it. My sensitivity can't handle it. Yeah. But when I look at those dogs or I see them or one comes across my view and I wasn't planning for it to be there, I simply say, God bless you for helping change the lives of others. And I think that any of you who are listening today who are upset by looking at these heinous, that's just all I can say, heinous videos of pets getting killed and mutilated and tortured and everything like that, just say, God bless you for helping change the lives of those that follow because they are obviously donating their life to help make it better for other individuals. It doesn't take away the heartache, but when I went to Oscar's Law, because I'd already been a part of your group for several months, I had to keep that in the back of my head through my tears, I must say. But every animal I saw, I prayed for them and I did. I thanked them and I, I did say a huge prayer. And it took me a good month to recover from two days of induction into Oscar Saul. But that knowledge that, and same with humans, you know, everyone who suffers in this life are, are doing it for the good of the universe. And if you keep that in your heart, you tend to be able to survive yeah, and if you look at it that way, that just remember those people are on the evolution of mankind. And some people are just evolving forward from a lesser life to a fuller being, whereas others are donating their lives to change the lives of millions. And for those, if you just can hold that in your heart, just like you said, it will get you through yeah. the horrific and heinous acts that are just out there. That's all I know how to say. All right, let's move along. And what's our next question? Our next question is from David in Utah. Uh huh. Why do our pets choose the same, similar, or different physical bodies to reincarnate next time? Oh, well, that's pretty easy. Ever gone to a store and looked at dresses? <laughs> or shoes? Yeah. Well, if you like blue shoes, you tend to go over there and look at the blue shoes first. And if you like um, calico or denim, you tend to go to that section first. So your pets sort of understand, first of all, what you like. And therefore, if you... Now, we've had some cats that people wanted a white cat back. And uh, Pat Coffey, who was on our show several weeks ago, she got Smitty back. And she says on the show she wanted Smitty as a white cat. Well, Smitty wanted to come back as a beige cat. So he did. Lots of times, animals will choose a different physical body simply because they want to change it up. It's like you going to get a different hairstyle. They've already done tri-coated border collie with red pricked ears and now they're going to do short samoid with blue eyes and a curly tail. The animal also chooses the body and the physical characteristics that are most appropriate for that part of your life's journey. For instance, we had two gorgeous German Shepherd dogs that were, did not reincarnate. And then we had a reading the other day with two gorgeous German Shepherd dogs. And one of the dogs is coming back as a Malmois. 
and he was a huge male German Shepherd in that reincarnation. But in the next one, he's going to be a female Malinois, which is sort of like a German Shepherd, but tinier and on a smaller scale, because he's going to go through the end of life with his pet guardian. And that means that as a huge German Shepherd, they probably wouldn't let him into the retirement home. But as a petite Malinois, they'll allow him to be there. So, David, it's most important for you to know they usually choose the same because they know you like it. So that's just they're choosing to look like what you like them to look like or similar. That's them changing it up. They want to wear something just a little bit different, like in one incarnation, they're fluffy haired. and The next one, they may want to be smooth haired. Why not? It's like you changing your hair and the different physical bodies. That is simply choosing the most appropriate body so they can go on that part of their incarnation journey with you. Example, we had a girl that had a cat that was a bunny when she was a child. Sometimes the horse you have when you were a teenager and lived on the farm becomes your Jack Russell. Sometimes your Jack Russell when you lived out on the farm becomes your bird when you move into the city and can't have a dog in your apartment. So the third reason is they choose the most appropriate fur, feather, or fin form to join you in that time frame of your journey. I actually understand that quite well now because I think that um, my first Joey taught me about a particular breed. He was a Staffy cross, but it opened my eyes up to breed-specific legislation, which I'm against, and uh, he returned again as a Staffy cross, and now I'm heavily involved in anti-breed-specific legislation. So I think he came back because I learned to love the Staffy and learned to see their plight and how much they are malaligned in society and, and how people misunderstand their nature. And that was his lesson to me. And he came back in similar but different for a purpose, to teach me something as well as I think that was his original plan was to teach me about difference in breeds. And I think that another thing is every time an animal reincarnates, you're both learning together. So you're teaching them something and they're teaching you something. And it is a, and that's the key word, most important for everybody to know. It's your learning together during that incarnation. And on that thought, we're going to take a break for our sponsors. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. Hi, this is Tim Link, animal communicator and pet expert and host of Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. Have you ever wanted to know what your pet is really thinking? Do you want to find out if they truly understand what you're trying to tell them? Ever wish you could build a better understanding and closer relationship with your pet? Well, now you can. Learning to communicate with animals is a four-part on-demand workshop. In the workshop, you'll learn the essential techniques that are necessary to communicate with animals, including what is animal communication, breathing correctly to achieve the perfect state to communicate with your animals at a deeper level, using guided meditation exercises and method to communicate with animals, and how to send and receive information from your animals. So if you're wanting to learn how to communicate and connect with your animals at a deeper level, visit PetLifeRadio.com forward slash workshop and purchase and download Learning to Communicate with Animals. You'll be glad you did. Hi, I'm Dr. Robin Gansert, President and CEO of American Humane Association, the country's first national humane organization, here to tell you about our new show, Be Humane, on Pet Life Radio. Each week, we'll be bringing you the latest news and issues affecting our animal friends, and we'll also be bringing you interviews with Hollywood's biggest animal advocates, here to share tales about their pets and what they're doing to promote a more humane world. Our own highly experienced staff and friends of the organization will also join us each week to share what they're up to in the animal world. I hope you'll stop by. Until then, let's always remember to be humane. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> Bring on some more questions because we're ready. Well, Brent, this one's from me. This is a question I'm curious about because it does affect me as it would affect you and many of our members in our Facebook group. When we have a reincarnated pet, I have Jojo, you have friend. Mm -hmm. When I die 
because I've had, and I'm sure Jojo will come back again, so I'll probably have three incarnations of, of Joey and you with friend. Mm-hmm. When we die, which incarnation will greet us? Do we see them when we die as in a physical form and which one of them will greet us? Excellent question. But it boils down to the simplicity of energy. Now, a lot of, and I have to use people as an example here, a lot of individuals, when they dream about or see a person on the other side or a pet on the other side, it's been a proven fact for those who research the paranormal that you will see usually that individual or pet in a younger, stronger, healthier state. So that is when you are alive on earth and you're having a vision of them in your head. Now, if you see pet spirits, you normally see them at their healthy, happy time. You don't see them limping around or with the cancer or when they're in chronic renal failure. You see them as a fuzzy, happy, alive animal while they were with you. So when you go to the other side, you, like the animals, will turn into sparkler form. Because if you want to know how a person progresses, again, this is in the Animal Reincarnation book, it is just like a pet does. And someone said to me, Brent, can you use these same techniques that are in the Animal Reincarnation book to touch a pet and talk to a pet and feel a pet and see a pet on the other side with humans? The answer is yes, because Mike, who was my fiance that was killed, taught me all of those things from the other side as a human, and I did just the opposite. I said, hmm, if I can do this with Mike as a human, why can't I do it with a pet? So as you, Coco, go across the death line, you come into sparkler form, just like your pet does. You go into a beautiful little glow light or a gorgeous little sparkler. And in my mind, I don't think it's about which incarnation will greet you. I think it's about the essence of each of you, I'm going to probably cry here, will be joined together. And when I see energy on the other side, again, you're in sparkler form because you're part of all there is. Yeah. And so when you die and your Jojo's over there, then you will turn into sparkler form and he will be in sparkler form and the two of you will merge. There's a wonderful book called Proof of Heaven by Dr. Alexander, and he was a neurosurgeon in the United States who sort of poo-pooed reincarnation and poo-pooed near-death experiences and sort of just sort of placated his clients and went, okay, honey, I understand you're talking about that. You may have talked to the other side and, okay, you're going to die, but eh, this isn't really real. Well, Mm. the universe decided to explain it to him, so they put him in a bacterial meningitis coma, and for a week, they took him to the other side and let him see and be and do, and then he came back, and now he spent his whole life being compelled to tell that everything he sort of poo-pooed and thought was like, meh maybe is real yeah, and he des- yeah and he describes the same thing that you are more in well i'm going to say sparkler form but it's thought form because those who can see spirits before a spirit coagulates on earth like if you're lying there in bed and you want somebody to show up in front of you you will get a whole room full of sparkles it's like somebody's thrown sparkle dust over everything and that sparkle dust will coagulate and transform into a spirit or a ghost see-through form. So when you go on the other side, you're back to that all there is little sparkler form, except you're maintaining your own energetic space. And when you run into Jojo's energetic space, because your sparkler form has no boundaries and his sparkler form have no boundaries, you sort of intersect. Mm. You know, it's sort of like putting salt and pepper on the same thing. They intersect and you're bonded by the love and the tapestry of the two energy that mesh so well. And then telepathically, you have your thought forms and each of you really become one. So I don't think that which incarnation, I think that all there is of his soul's being. Because every soul has a unique and very specific soul imprint. When I look at an imprint of a person or of a pet, you see a very specific imprint. Jojo will have a very specific imprint, and it doesn't matter how many incarnations he does on Earth. He has that specific energy blueprint that's his and his alone. 
And when you die, you have a specific energy blueprint, which is like a snowflake. Everybody has an electromagnetic pattern that is individualized, just like snowflakes are individualized. Mm -hmm. So you two will recognize one another's individualized electromagnetic patterns, but it won't be like, well, I didn't like that outfit. Mm. How about trying on another one? And it won't be you at 80 years old looking at him at two years old. It'll be your yeah. energy essences joining in recognition through the electromagnetic blueprints and the resonance of the love energy and the similar vibration between both of you. Do you still communicate with Mike, Brent? No, I'm waiting for him to get back. And I think he's in the reincoagulation state. So it's like, okay, buddy, hurry. <laughs> so... Mike is going to return in your lifetime. Yes. Wow. That's wonderful. Yes. Just wish he would hurry up. And if you're listening to the show, get your little <laughs> energy buns right back here. All right. We'll take the last question for the day. What's your last one? This is from one of our members. Do human and animal souls occupy the same realm? Well, I think the key to answering that is how do they mean the word realm? Yeah, I just wonder if they're asking whether the Rainbow Bridge, in our definition, where animals go for their holiday and when humans pass over, if they find a common ground. Okay, well, let's take it on three levels. Number one, the same realm could be Earth. And when you're sending us your questions, because we do do our fishbowl drawing every so often, just like we're doing today, or remember, join our Facebook group. And you can ask your questions there because we get a lot of our questions from our wonderful members. But if you're talking about realm as earth, yes, you both occupy the same thing. That's why they reincarnate to you. If you're talking about the same realm of afterlife, then yes, because you're both that essence of soul energy, just like we spoke about. So there is no separation. Do you follow me? Yeah. The separation is. is only in the mind. The human mind is what creates a separation. The separation is just like people create the separation of living and dying. And there is no separation. There's just a veil of dense human energy, which you and I are sitting in now. And then just looking across and there stands Mike or anybody else or any other pet in steam form or spirit form. And so it's our mind that makes realms. Because energy is a part of all there is. Yeah, I like that. I understand that. That's great. I mean, we control as we grow from children, from infants to children to adults, we are taught to put everything in a box. Right. And we confine ourselves and our, our minds to what society sees as conventional. Right. And it basically, is. it's your mind that limits. Yeah. That's why animals are so free, because they don't have right. that. They don't have the need or the ability to put things into little boxes and put labels on them. Oh, I'm going to disagree with that. Friend knows exactly who he dislikes, and he puts them in his <laughs> dislike. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but th that's a personal choice. He's not saying, Mum's given me a ball today instead of a bone. Now, I don't want that because today's Tuesday, and on Tuesday we play ball. He doesn't have the ability to box it into, I can't do this because today's Tuesday, whereas humans can. Right. Humans say, Monday to Friday, I work, and on Saturdays and Sundays, that's my leisure time, and I will only do these things on the weekend. We make our own rules. We put so many rules on our own what? lives and in our minds, we stop ourselves being free and open to what is what is real. That's right. And a lot of people will say when you're doing a reading, well, how do you know that? Um, hello. Yeah. If you'll take your mind and go beyond the 10% that you use, yeah. it's there to use. You have just said, well, I can't do anything like that. And a lot of people, the best thing of all is I teach a class and we were doing it the other day. And I think there's a YouTube video on how to touch your descent. So you come apart and you feel your own energy. And by doing that, you can also learn to feel anything, human, animal, yeah. whatever, on the other side. And somebody said, oh, well, I can't do that. And I looked at her and I said, you know, my mother's bridge club who were in their 80s, one lady was 80. 86, the youngest was 84. Those girls sat around and could do it because they were old enough that they'd long given up. You know, having yeah. boxes, they said, we're old enough, we can do it, we have damn well please, excuse the language. Yeah. But it's the boxes that you put that limit the abilities sometimes that you have. The second thing that limits the abilities that you have is your evolutionary process. Because I was at a giving a speaking presentation the other night and someone said, oh, can everybody have their intuition ignited? 
Well, the answer was no. And, of course, everybody just opened their mouth because everybody's taught, oh, everybody can use their intuitive side. Well, not necessarily. You know why, Coco? Why? Because they're not at the same stage of evolution. Yeah. Some souls come in to be young souls, just yep. like you can have a pet that's one bumbling young soul. And you go, well, you know, that pet's a young soul. Then you can have another pet come in and go, that dog is three weeks old or six weeks old. And I swear it's acting like a 40-year-old. And yeah. that's an old soul in a young body. Same thing. You can only activate the level that is inherent in the person that is interested in evolving. Yep. So sometimes a person has a desire to activate more than they have learned the lessons to evolve through to be there. And that's why they're young souls, middle souls, and old souls. So not everybody's intuition can be rebirthed, activated, and recharged in the exact time they want because they haven't evolved through. So when you say the same realm, sometimes when you say the same realm, what you're speaking of is the evolution of the energy basis. Because there only can be a separation of energy bases because you recognize a young soul and you recognize a old soul and the realms of evolution, of personal journey, of personal learning on the earth school is different, but they're still in the realm of electromagnetic energy of all there is. So to me, going back to the question in the same realm, the realm is just defined by your state by of us. evolution. Yeah, the realm is defined by us because we, right. as, as I said, we put it in a box and say it's here or it's there, but it must be how it is. You know, we don't let the realm be what it is. Exactly. We have to label it and put a stamp on it and say this is where the realm is mm -hmm. rather than accepting the fact that there really is no realm that's right. And speaking of which, our next show to follow is going to be about Rainbow Bridge, which everybody considers a realm. And that's only half the story. So thank you for being with us today. Please send your questions to Brent at PetLifeRadio.com. Now, don't be asking for a reading. Ask questions or suggestions for new shows. Come on over and join our Facebook group. Coco's the monitor over there, and she does a great job, and there's so much you can learn listening to us. And join us every Every week because the podcast they're available all the archives are there and we have so much more we have our pet reincarnation blog we have our book animal reincarnation which is the number one resource in the world for pet loss grief and we thank you for taking your time and your efforts to send us all these questions that we had a good time answering so see you next week bye bye let's talk pets every week on demand only on petliferadio.com <laughs>